Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Aaron Airs. It's the start of 2018, we're in Cape Town, so let's take a look at what's featuring in the upcoming show. I'll run you through my King of the Air. We take a look at my new webpage. I meet up with Craig Koleski, South Africa's number one action sports photographer. We sat down with Ruben Lenton and see a little bit more about what the King of the Air means to us. In our headline news, we give you a glimpse into our new movie project. And finally, in our public section, we get to see the winner of The Biggest Crash. So let's jump straight into it. I arrived in Cape Town one month before the competition. The Red Bull King of the Air is probably the biggest event of the season, and for me it's really important. I've been going to the gym to get my body ready, out on the water to get fit, but when the day comes, it's all about how it is and what frame of mind you're in. So let's take a look at how it went for me on the day. So this is my fifth King of the Air coming up. So yeah, it's going to be an interesting one. There's a lot of really good riders. Everywhere I go, I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Can't make it anywhere. It's good. Wow, what a wicked action has just kicked off and we've already seen some huge jumps and some huge crashes. But then this other guy was getting pretty massive and at the beginning I didn't think he would be a threat but then he started to do pretty well. And he, uh, I thought, all right, I'll just at least do some other stuff for variety. So I grabbed the straps and then I thought, well, one big move would be a board off kite loop, which I've done a little bit over the last month or so. And it sent me into a front roll board off kite loop. I've never done one of them before. And I landed it, so pretty happy. I mean, <laughs> now, let's take a little look around my new website. Here we have my new website. I uh, launched it earlier in the year uh, with all my basic info. I feel like I need a place where everything can come together and people can tune in and see exactly what's going on. So here on that home page, got a few pictures rolling through and then you can scroll down a little bit and you'll be able to see all my latest updates. We also have a brief history page, which is basically a few pictures and a little bit about my story. Next up is updates, which has all my updates. Something this year that I hope to be doing a lot more of is some clinics. So I have an academy page, and this will be a little bit about how I can assist you in learning new tricks. And you can follow that where I'll be in my events page. Finally, in the tabs, you can get bookings here. This is for anyone wanting me to come to events do special promotions, and also just general info. So you can get me here on the bookings page. So there you have it. That's my new website. Head to aaronhadlow.com for all the latest info. Now, I've been coming to Cape Town for many years, since I was a young Grom, and every year we tend to have some sort of project on the go. This year we started off with a photo shoot with Ion, working alongside Craig Koleski. We go way back I think our first shot was back in 2006, so I thought it was time to go and visit him at his house and take a look at some of our old shots. All right, mate. Thanks for spending the time to sit down and go through some of these old photos. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. Well, we've had some pretty fun, fun shoots over the time as well. You find kite surfing kind of unique across the other sports or somehow you learn from each discipline and each well, sport? I mean, as, the, as a photographer, you got to learn about the sports you're shooting. And I've tried my hand in kiting, but it was pretty unsuccessful. But I understand the sport. I do wakeboarding and surfing. And yeah. So you learn quite quickly, but shooting with you guys, I always ask you questions, your advice and shots. And I think together, we all learn together on how to perfect shots and get the job done off quick. This was one of my favorite shots, I think, that we've done. So a funny story about this photo, this was printed up in the Red Bull offices. Yeah. If you remember, and they took it down because the sun was so bright, it was hurting the staff <laughs> members' eyes. So they took it down and replaced it with the table mountain shot. Man, some of the old shots are so funny as well, eh? Like, there's these ones here with Ruben when we were so young, the first years that we came. I think it's 05, 06. 
This is actually one of my, like, another one of my favorites that I, I picked out when you sent me the selection. You don't realize when you're in the water, you're having fun, you don't actually feel the wind as much, but when you're on the beach in the elements, it's a totally different environment. Yeah. And you like come out the water and they're dying and you're like, oh, what's wrong? It's not that bad. Like, <laughs> that I remember crazy. some days we'd go out on like the 15 meter lines at like half the length of what we would usually ride. And this was it. We were like, yeah, we got to get this new kind of shot. Like people didn't have these shots with the kite in the front. And you're only three meters off the water then. Yeah, exactly. Now you're 20 meters off the we water. We sent the kite down and we're like, just get the picture and then we would explode on the water. Over the years, things just change, and I think you just mature and evolve and try different things. Yeah, yeah we've got some cool stuff. Well, yeah, speaking of how it's changed, it's your old cameras, man. No, yeah. One of these is not even digital anymore. No, so that first one there is a, geez, a Canon EOS 5. That was my first like pro film camera. Yeah. And then the first time I ever shot with you guys was with this Canon 10D. I mean, I've been all over the world, and there's no place better than home. You know yeah. conditions, you know, you, you're part of the system, you can get a shot easier where in the countries there's always their way and you've got to work around that. But you've probably had some casualties of your own with equipment, there's the other side of things as well. Yeah, just like travelling to countries where they don't understand the camera gear and it gets confiscated and oh, the list goes on but... I remember you went, where was it for uh, that was Morocco? was Morocco with uh, Ruben and the Mystic crew Yeah, and I got arrested. <laughs> Too much equipment. Yeah, too much equipment and they kept the gear and eventually two weeks later flying back to South Africa they destroyed all my gear. No so way. Never got it back. Never got it back. Yeah. And then you had to do the shoot on some tiny little borrowed camera or something. Yeah, borrowed cameras in Morocco. Oh, I could write a book about that trip. This one in particular caught my eye when I went and picked up the print and it's the the guy with the like drifting around this perfect corner. To oh, shoot. So that's Mad Mike and Red Bull had a project to do a drifting sequence up Francia Pass and we got the brief and the brief was golden sunlight. I've never been so nervous, so much pressure just thinking really? of the shot that they sent me to get, I was shaking taking the photos. But I managed to shoot four different angles here and nice. got the shots. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, this and, one's uh, really cool. Stuff every like sport's that. got a certain way on how you go to set it up and shoot it. I mean, with you guys in karting, you don't want to touch shots with you in blue sky. If you guys are doing your mega loops, you want the kart, you want yeah. to see you, you want to see some background. So you've got to take that in consideration. With surfing, they want some foreground, they want some cool light. So every sport has a specific element you need to capture. And All right, dude. Well, that wraps it up, I think, really. These shots have been really cool to see. Hopefully, I can keep a few for the old memory books. But yeah, thanks for taking the time. Awesome. It's been great. Thanks for everything. All right, we're on our way to Dolphin Beach. We're just going to meet up with Ruben. We're here to talk up a little bit more about King of the Air and how our careers have gone in general. Let's see what he's up to. Oi, Ezza, Frezza. <laughs> All right, mate. That's <laughs> how are you? So I wanted to bring you here to Dolphin Beach because I think we've had some pretty good memories in the past. I remember, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, we were doing mega loop mobs and huge handle passes and we've always been here doing these crazy kite loops and everything. Do you feel like Cape Town shaped us as riders a little bit? I mean, Cape Town has shaped me in many ways. Uh, <laughs> physically, mentally, and uh, of course on the water as well. Yeah. Uh, it's been one of our favorite places in the world to come. I mean... Yeah, you've been totally instrumental in the whole big air process. And you won the King of the Air back in the day. And then now you kind of brought King of the Air back to Cape Town. That's it. Yeah, my whole vibe has always been, I mean, I've got talent for freestyle as well, but that was more back in the day. And uh, then, yeah, the King of the Air inspired me since I saw the first content uh, in 2002. Then I ended up qualifying myself for the Red Bull King of the Air in 2005. And uh, I ended up winning it, and that was amazing. And uh, I think from then on, I just switched the key and, uh, yeah, just followed my heart. And that was uh, flying as big as we could. My vision has always been to create a platform where we can push each other to the limits, get the best riders in the world to just go and perform the most extreme they can. And in order to do that, you need extreme conditions as well, you know? So it's really the conditions that make an event. And if you run one of the most prestigious events in kiteboarding, then yeah, you need a waiting period and you need to uh, make sure you score the right uh, ingredients to, uh, to supply the riders to go next level. I mean, I've been pioneering in this for 10 years and uh, I've 
yeah, most of the mega loops the guys are doing are my signature moves, you know. Yeah. And uh, they're building on that and now throwing in double, triple rotations and yeah, handle passes everywhere they can. So it's uh, it's definitely being stepped up and that's what, what it's all about. Yeah, I'm more from like the, the tech side, I guess, and I'm like calculating what it takes to win the heat. Oh, no shit. So like I Competition actually, nerd. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's like, it's, I don't want to do board offs and kite loops, but I did have to adapt this year to kind of add that into my into my heat because I figured that was probably what would do well. And Dude, then, that's how you've always done it. And uh, even if I was in the heat with you, I never wanted to win or felt that I deserved to win because in my eyes, you're the best kiteboarder in the world anyway. And always so technical and intelligent with it. And I'm just like, I don't give a shit. I just want to have fun, ride hard, and wherever it ends up, it ends up. I've always been about comp because it's what I've always loved to do, but you've come away from that a long time ago. And what sort of things do you see yourself doing you've done a lot of experiences camps traveling videos yeah. that's what you enjoy the most isn't it yeah definitely and uh, especially after i've survived cancer uh, to me every minute on the water and every minute that i make myself feel good or make others feel good is, is time well spent you know yeah i mean you can make up a lot of money but you can make up a lot of time i really thrive off people's energy and yeah. i love hanging and being around people so that's why we created the land 10 experiences to really uh, yeah uh, host clients in an extremely inspiring lifestyle uh, program throughout a full week yeah. and uh, yeah this has just been phenomenal everybody's been enjoying it a lot and uh, yeah I hope to do many more of those. We had a f session in Cape Point at Flatboom the other day and it was so clear to see that just riding together like it just felt like it was way back and just like any other session and you can see with your smile on your face like it's just as good as the day you started so that's exactly. insane to, to see. Nice one for coming, dude. Thanks, brother. Many more memories to come. Fuck yeah, man. I mean, you're my best friend uh, in the world. And uh, riding with you at Plat Boom the other day, just recognize that again, just being on the water together. It's like when things go in a natural flow and you just feel safe out there and feel really good out there. And uh, yeah, to many more sessions to come, man. <laughs> as I as big time. Love you, bro. Now it's time for the public section. We want to see your best videos. Some time ago, I sent out a clip asking for your best crashes. Now, let's roll through and have a look at who won the competition. Thank you to everyone that entered their video. We had loads of submissions and not a single one disappointed. There can only be one winner though, so let's count down from number three. We start with Iztok, who took a massive crash in South Africa. What an unbelievable entry, fully inverted as his kite has already hit the water. Not to mention the close call with the board following close behind. Wow. It gets worse though, coming in a close second place, we have Craig Knights. What an impact. Ouch, that one really must have hurt. But wait, believe it or not, there is one more to come. Chosen because of the pure g-force involved, this ferocious loop is massive and even in these strong winds, he lands halfway towards his kite. What an incredible crash. Your winner is Julian Suri. All right, congratulations. You are the winner of this Red Bull King of the Air hat. Now, for episode two, we are gonna be looking for the most stylish trick and you will have the chance to win a brand new Hadlow harness. Send your download link to airs at aaronhadlow.com and you can feature in the next episode. Now it's time for the headline news and it's big. In 2019, I will be releasing a feature length movie. So for the whole of 2018, I plan to be filming in multiple locations around the world, filming my favorite disciplines, big air, freestyle, and park. I'll be working with Lassie Kobolski, and you may recognize his name from my previous edit, Reflection. Now, let's take a look at how it's been going so far. Man, so, I just got off the phone from Latsy and tomorrow is meant to be the first day of filming for the movie and he hasn't made the flight. So that's a bit of a bummer, we were meant to go and collect him in the morning. Not the best start to the project so far, let's hope we can sort things out and get him here as soon as possible. A week later, finally heading to the airport to pick up Latsy. So let's hope he's here this time. Made it! <laughs> Mega 
loop, front roll, grab, average, average day. Yeah, average day. We'll get some more stuff. For more information on this project, make sure you follow the hashtag AaronHadlow20. All right, so that's a wrap. That is the end of episode one. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe and I'll see you in episode two.